buckle up buckaroos because we are finally embarking in earnest on the art influencer art supply review series. I don't see this being a particularly long series, like not as long as the student grade showdown, but it's one that I've already started dabbling with and I'm looking forward to exploring more. So today we're starting with the Josie Lewis art watercolor palette. This was sent to me by a friend who purchased it for herself and passed it along to me so I would have a chance to review it. So I really appreciate it. Thank you, Mary Catherine. I did not purchase it, but I did consider buying it pretty strongly. Um, I was considering buying it around December when it was about $40 for the palette and I felt like that was a lot of money for me to spend on an art influencer palette at that particular time when I had other expenses. So I really appreciate Mary Catherine sending this my way so I can take a look at it. Also, the recording environment is a little bit different. It is super nasty outside, it wants to storm. And uh, so I'm not gonna do it outside. And my studio is lit up like the surface of the sun and I don't really like, it's not really ideal for recording my face in. Also I have a little twinge of a migraine because of the weather outside. So today's video is a long one and it's basically a two-parter because I also talk about the Andrea Nelson watercolor palettes. I will link both people down in the description. I want to, before we really get into this, I really wanna talk about what I mean. Sorry, Bowie is, is Bowie. Uh, I'm in his room and I'm in his chair. Um, I wanna talk about what I mean when I say art influencer. I don't mean influencer in like the traditional sense that many people often think of influencer, which is basically a modern day model who doesn't necessarily have a particular skill set or a particular knowledge base that they're selling or bringing to the table. The reason people follow them is for their personality alone or for their glamour or for whatever reason people are interested in the Kardashians. That is not what I mean when I say art influencers. When I'm talking about art influencers, I am talking about artists often artists who are teaching artists who the majority of their popularity and their sales came after social media or the majority of how they get their work out there is through social media. So for example, I, I might fit into that category if you don't know about any of my comic work and you just know me from YouTube, right? So I am not saying it to be a derogatory term. I'm not saying it to denigrate their efforts. I am not saying they are less or more than other artists. They are simply, simply artists who, for whatever reason, have accrued enough popularity that they can sell courses that aren't just art courses, but courses on how to be an artist or how to sell art or how to use the internet. Um, and they're popular enough to be able to sell art supplies, whether it is white labeled art supplies or whether they are working with a popular company like Da Vinci or Daniel Smith, or whether they are manufacturing their own art supplies or having them manufactured for them. So for example, we already looked at the Amy Tangerine palette. We have looked at some Jane Davenport palettes. Those would be more extreme examples of what I would call art influencers. For the sake of this series, I am also interested in looking at coloring and coloring book influencers. I am also looking at craft influencers, but I am limiting what I am looking to to watercolor palettes or drawing supplies or comic. I would love to look at an art influencers comic making kit as a comic artist. So I am not doing acrylics, I'm not doing oils, I'm not doing sculpture or ceramics. I am limiting it to the realm that I know about. Um, I am open to take trades. If you wanna unload some art supplies or loan them out to me so I can review them for this series, I am open to that. But this is not, as far as I see it, this is not, I'm not going to take any product from any of the companies, any of the individuals themselves. I plan on either buying, borrowing, or trading for these supplies so I can give you guys um, as fair a review as possible. I also want to point out that um, I do definitely have strong opinions about art supplies. I also have strong opinions about the responsibility of an artist with influence and how they use that influence 
as well as strong opinions on uh, what artists choose to attach their names to in terms of products. So uh, I plan on reviewing a pretty wide array of art influencer watercolor and drawing kits. I plan on, I, I am not reviewing anything from anyone I don't like. Uh, I wasn't super familiar with An Amy Tangerine before. Um, I was a little familiar with Jane Davenport's work. I have been following Josie Lewis on Instagram for over a year now. So any of these kits or products, it's from artists whose work I like. So this isn't like, Becca's time to drag an artist. These are all artists who I follow on TikTok or I follow on YouTube or I follow on Instagram and I like their work generally independently of the palettes. So I wanna make it really clear that any negative criticism I may or may not have about the products is not a personal, I don't know any of these people personally. Um, it is not professional. Generally, I like their work, but I have not dealt with them peer to peer. Um, this is not that kind of review. I am not that kind of channel. I am not interested in doing that kind of work. Um, I know drama and uh, he said, she said, and T channels were popular, might still be popular. That's not what I'm trying to do here. It's not my intention. I don't have any beef with anybody. Um, my goal is as a reviewer to do a series y'all might be interested in that might be genuinely helpful to you guys and frankly to review palettes and products that people might actually be looking up. So also I'm just nosy and interested. Um, as an artist who would be open to brand deals of my own, but I have specific restrictions that I would want to have in place, I am interested in the nuts and bolts of how this is done. Now, no one is forthcoming about that. If I ever get those offers, I would love to talk to you guys about that because I am super curious. I'm sure y'all are super curious, but no one has offered. The closest I've ever come was I worked with Faber Castell for Hands-On Creativity a few years ago. Would love to do that more of that kind of work. That was super fun. I really had a good time with it. But as of right now, no one has approached me to do a curated set for like anything. So um, I would be open to that. I've had requests to do art kits. I've had requests to do subscription boxes like me put together subscription boxes. The next time I go to Japan, I'll probably contact a few friends and ask if they'd like me to bring them back anything and we'll set a limit and we'll work that out. But in general, I am not in that game. I'm a comic artist. Comic artists are typically not considered for that kind of work. They don't typically hire comic artists to draw for Faber Castell, even though they sell manga-esque products, or for Strathmore, even though they sell products that have manga on them. So uh, I exist in like a weird different category. I also want to make it clear I am not jealous of these. I mean, I am a jealous person, like I won't lie, but I, the, the kind of deals I see people typically getting is not something that I want for myself. Uh, the closest would be like Denise Snowden, Soden working with Da Vinci. I think that is super cool. That is the kind of stuff that I would like. So I'm envious. I would like that for me, but I would never take that from another artist. So um, I realize like some of you guys, y'all see, y'all know me. Y'all hang out in my Discord. Like you hang out during my streams. You know what kind of person I am and what kind of vibes I have. Uh, but I realize I may be getting some new people here. So hi, hello, welcome. I'm Becca Hilburn. I'm a watercolor comic artist and illustrator. I do narrative art. I have a manga influence to my style. I make the comic Seven Inch Kara. You can read about it or you can read it at seveninchkara.com as a web comic. Um, so I come from this as a watercolor comic artist. I am also an art educator. I teach kids, teens, and adults, although I am leaning away from teaching groups of adults at this point in time. Um, so a lot of my points come from not only years of reviewing watercolor supplies and years of experience with watercolor, but also teaching and seeing some of the pain points my students have. Another reason I wanted to do this series is people ask me all the time what I recommend and I am like small potatoes in the world of art, in, in, just in general, you know, um, I'm a super nobody. Um, and people ask me what I, what I recommend. So I know that people who have more sway and who are more popular than I am definitely get those questions. And there's, so I wanted to see if the watercolors that they are sometimes literally selling in their online shop, the watercolors that they say they use every day, the watercolors that they swear up and down are professional quality and are not gonna fade. 
if those watercolors are actually a good fit for their audience, like if they will do what they want them to do, and if they are priced appropriately for the quality, or if you could find those same watercolors at a lower price point, or if you could afford better quality watercolors for the same amount of money. I plan on in basically every video telling you guys, like regardless of what I think of the watercolors they're selling, I think you should support artists. If you like an artist's work, I think you should try to buy it. Whether you're buying an original, you're buying art prints, you're buying merchandise like charms or stickers or tote bags, you're buying their books. I think you should support the artists. This is not me saying don't support those artists. I think worst case scenario, it will be me saying don't spend your money on their watercolor palettes, buy their art instead. And I don't think there's anything wrong with saying that. I, as an artist who is reliant on the support of people who like my art and viewers, I, I can't really say I have any art collectors. Uh, my art just doesn't take those bells for people. Um, it means a lot to me when people buy my art. That's my art and my books. It means a lot to me when y'all buy them. It's really important to me. So um, I don't think I will ever tell you guys just don't buy from an artist, period. That doesn't, that's not really me unless the person is legitimately scamming people, in which case I generally don't find that out until the videos come out and then somebody's like, hey Becca, did you know? And they send me all these receipts and I'm like, no, I did not know. I don't know what to do with this. I'm not that kind of channel. Um, not that I don't think people shouldn't know, but also like, I'm not that kind of channel. So uh, I wanted to kind of set the stage and set expectations before we really get into the series because, and I talked about this later on when I talk about the Andrea Nelson palette, it is very easy for bored people to look to stir up tea. It is very easy for bored people to look to start drama. It is very easy for bored people to try to create beef. I do not have any beef with any of these people. All of these reviews are going to be good faith reviews. They're not going to be anger reviews. They're not going to be spite reviews. I don't know any of these people personally. When possible, if they sell a book, I am also going to buy the book. Um, and hope that that influences how I utilize their, the products that I've purchased from them. Um, because sometimes there's just, I just don't know how to use something maybe, or maybe they have a technique that I didn't know about because a lot of these art influencers are self-taught. So that means they did not learn watercolor through traditional means and they may have an innovative or a unique or an unusual use of the materials. I am a weird combination of, I went to art school, but I went for comics. Uh, but all of my friends watercolor <laughs> and I have taken a lot of workshops and classes and I've read a lot of books and I utilize the internet and I've had friends teach me. So I exist, I wouldn't call myself self-taught because I've benefited from all these other people's knowledge. Um, if it were, if I called myself self-taught, that would be a lie to you guys. That would be obfuscating the learning process. And that is not what I do here on this channel. So um, I am open to the idea that there are techniques that I just haven't learned yet and that they might teach me that might change my opinion on the product that they're selling. So when feasible, I am either checking their book out of the library, which hasn't been working well for me because my library doesn't have any of these books. They have watercolor books from 15 years ago. Um, or, and I was doing it on Kindle and I find Kindle is the worst way to read watercolor books. I was trying to read Jenna Rainey's book from, on Kindle and I just it was a really bad reading experience on Kindle so I, per, I just purchased the book during Prime Day so um, I am trying to be as fair as I can that makes things kind of expensive so uh, this may take a while also um, while I have had friends send me links to art influencers that they like who sell products this is not the end all be all. So if there is a coloring channel with a watercolor or drawing product out that you would like to see me review, link it to me. If there is a crafting channel that does water, like I, I used to review a lot of like Tim Holtz and Ranger stuff. So uh, if they're doing something that falls in my wheelhouse of drawing and watercolor, let me know. I'll try to take a look at it. Like so, um, I know I'm like explaining a lot and caveating a lot because this is a series I'm actually really excited for and really nervous about. I am going to include the 
footage of their website, of their social media, because I think that context is important because I am also, as an unpopular artist, I am also interested in improving my own presence and improving how people perceive my work and uh, selling art prints. So um, obviously I want to take a look at what they're doing and see if I can learn from it and provide context to you guys who might not be familiar with their work as to why these palettes might be popular or what kind of art they create that might lead to the palette that they're selling, right? I think to me as someone who is like a, somewhat works in this sphere but isn't like high up in this sphere, I think that if it were me, I, there would be a lot of curation going on. I wouldn't work with brands I'm not familiar with. I wouldn't work with brands that I don't like. I wouldn't work with colors I don't like. I wouldn't make a palette I didn't like. I wouldn't put my name on that. So I do think, while I don't think that's, we've seen with the Amy Tangerine palette, that's not necessarily everybody's decision. Some people like to be in business and make money. I like to be poor, I guess. Um, I, I, I do think that should be a consideration and I do look at their work for context. So that was a super long preamble to what might be a very short series. If you find links or resources, send it to me. Etsy also counts. I don't know how many I can afford to do how quickly because this could be very a very expensive series. All my series seem to be very expensive series. So it may take me a really long time to get through everybody, but I am interested in at least checking things out and knowing what's out there and being able to talk about it. So we are going to take a look at the Josie Lewis Art Watercolor Palette today. I hope you guys are ready for it. I'm ready to share it for you. And thank you again to Mary and Catherine to send it, for sending this to me so that I could review it because that saved me about 40 bucks. So thank you and let's find out about this palette today. All right, art nerds, it is time for me, an internet nobody, to play the most dangerous game of all. I am going to review Art Influencer Art Supplies. And this might not look like much, but inside is a palette of Josie Lewis watercolors. So I have been reviewing watercolors and doing watercolor tutorials with an illustration slant for a while. I primarily paint with professional grade watercolors. In fact, I talk about that in my Building a Ginormous Watercolor palette, and I show you guys what I like to use. And I primarily do illustration, narrative illustration, as well as comic illustration. So I'm painting a lot of people, animals, environments, um, a lot of stuff that isn't necessarily painted a whole lot here on YouTube with a cartoony or a caricaturized slant. And I can show you guys how I do that. I've got some great playlists for you guys. But I have reviewed at this point hundreds of watercolor palettes between the professional grade series that I'm doing and my student grade showdown as well as me reviewing student grade watercolors before the showdown. So I have a lot of experience reviewing inexpensive watercolors, student grade watercolors, as well as professional grade watercolors. I've even reviewed some children's grade watercolors. So I think that gives me a really excellent basis for um, talking about watercolor and maybe even talking about watercolor in a way that is going to be interesting and helpful to you guys. I also tend to get really in depth about my watercolors, although I'll admit from the top, I as a reproduction artist who works commercially am not super concerned about light fastness. There are other properties I care about a lot more. There are some other phenomenal channels here on YouTube that really dive into that. They have the time and the audience and the resources to make that feasible for them. I am lacking some of those elements. Also, I have ADHD, so frankly, I will just forget. So uh, I like to lean on uh, my hyperfixation on watercolor and art supplies and use that to provide you guys with really in-depth reviews and demonstrations. We are going to talk about the price, and we are going to talk about Josie Lewis as an art artist and an art influencer. I have been following Josie Lewis on Instagram for a few years now. So before we really open the package, let's take a look 
at what she does online. So as I mentioned, I am familiar with her work from Instagram. Haven't really dived into her too much. She has been heavily promoting her watercolor set on Instagram. I don't know if I'm in that target market, but I've been getting a lot of the ads for the watercolor set talking about how wonderful it is and how many colors you can mix with it. And let's be real before we even look at the watercolor set. You should be able to mix colors with your watercolor set. If you can't mix colors with your watercolor set, you have bought garbage. But um, so there's been she's gotten a lot of negative comments about wasting paint. I don't agree with those comments. I like her art. I think it's really fun. There's a reason I follow her work on Instagram. It brings a smile to my face. She does what I am most familiar with her doing right now is like this sort of uh, very simple, meditative, but very satisfying to look at color play as well as like the more chunky watercolor work. So um, her site is already advertising that her watercolor supplies are on sale. She also sells patterns and templates if you want to paint along with her. This is the set that Mary Catherine sent to me. I believe Mary Catherine paid full price at the time. It's on sale for $30 now. That is slightly more in keeping with, if you look at this, it looks a lot like the Prima Marketing sets. It looks a lot like, all of those are Mungyo sets. Like I'll cut to the chase. I am betting this is a Mungyo set repackaged. They are spoilers. I don't know for a fact. That's what we're gonna dive in for today. But it looks a lot like the Jane Davenport and the Prima Marketing slash Art Alternative set. Is it Art Alternatives, Art Philosophy? It's changed names a couple times. Um, but it's like a basic 12 color set. It looks a lot like if you took the uh, Jane Davenport basic set and like the Prima Marketing tropical set and you smashed them together to get those bright colors. So um, that's kind of what I'm figuring this set is going to be today. She says, ready for vibrant watercolor paints? Check out this exclusive 12 color travel set with loads of rainbowy goodness. This is Josie's everyday set. These archival and light fast watercolor paints have a high pigment load, thrilling vibrancy and beautiful transparency. The paint pants come in a travel size foldable palette with dual mixing trays. See the video below to watch the unboxing and swatching process. And I mean, obviously, if you are familiar with what I do here on the channel, any claims you make are claims that can be used against you and may be used against you. They are what I am going to test against. But I will also say that um, from what I've seen from her work, she doesn't do like a boatload of color mixing. She also doesn't, to my knowledge, do like figurative work or narrative work or animal work. So our watercolor needs are very different, but this is looking a lot like, <laughs> a lot like sets that I've seen before, usually at about half this price. So I'm not going to do the watercolor video for you guys. You guys can find it on her YouTube channel and watch it. They do promise satisfaction guaranteed. And uh, there is also her watercolor bundle, the watercolor four course library and watercolor set for 99 bucks, which is kind of hefty. Uh, she promises a mix master color companion digital course valued at $79, all about color mixing with watercolor. Watercolor for rebels valued at $50 painting pattern pack. This one has templates, so you guys might like that one. And then modern bright and abstract watercolor course. So everything here has an a la carte value of $250, but now on sale for a sweet bargain. These courses are great for beginning beginners, including kids age nine-ish and up, and those looking to brush up on some skills and gain some new techniques. The projects are colorful, approachable, and designed to provide an enjoyable painting experience. In my new color mixing intensive course, Mix Master, there are four fascinating color lectures, eight exercises, and eight projects. And then if you guys want, I may check this out later on my own time, but if you guys are interested, here they are. Now, I will point out to you guys, in case you're new to watercolor and you found my channel looking up if this palette was worth it for you, YouTube is 
full of really great watercolor tutorial content, depending on what you're looking for. If you want to learn how to paint and draw people and animals, I am your gal. I am doing that here, but there are lots of other artists here on YouTube, including the Frugal Crafter, who do some great watercolor tutorials that you can either pay a minimal amount of money for, or you can watch them for free. There's also Skillshare and Domestica classes, as well as, you know, I'm just going to say this here. I've started buying some of these art influencer watercolor books to see if they're any good. Some of them I think are garbage, like don't explain things at all, but I think Macachino's No Fail Watercolor is really good. I've really been enjoying it. She's covering a lot of material that I already know, but as an art teacher, I'm always looking for resources that I can point my students to. And Macachino's book, especially because she has a YouTube channel, is a wonderful fit. And I'm a little disappointed because I was wanting to do a book very similar to what she does um, in terms of explaining things very clearly in the beginning. And she's already done it, so I don't have to do it. So y'all should check it out. And I don't have any any affiliation. She doesn't know I exist. Um, we, I don't have any affiliation with her. I bought the book out of pocket, so that is my own recommendation. But I do want to point out, like, when you're following art influencers and you're getting into an art form, it is very easy to just trust what they say and to buy all the stuff that they're selling. And then... Maybe it doesn't really answer your questions. Maybe it isn't really performing the way a professional grade watercolor might perform. So that's why I wanted to kind of just let you guys know there are a lot of free, wonderful resources, both on YouTube and on the internet in general. If you come join my totally free, does not cost you anything Discord server, I am happy to link you a bunch of my favorite resources. So... We, we tend to have the same sort of story, although, so I have noticed with art influencers, the story is generally, I'm a mom of two plus children, and I discovered art three years ago, and now I'm super famous, which as someone who's been making comics since she was 13, that's a little, a little rough to hear. Um, Josie, though, um, has been a visual artist since she was a teenager. I appreciate that as someone who has also been a visual artist since she was a teenager. And yeah, you work the, the, the day job. Um, so I love her studio setup, by the way. Now it is clearly just a workspace for recording. If you guys can see, I'm so jealous. Mine is a workspace for recording and making comics and making art. So it can't be as pretty, but... So here are some examples of her work, including this beautiful mosaic, as well as some gorgeous color play here. Now, this is when people leave nasty little comments on her calling, saying that she's wasting paint. This is what they're talking about. But I feel like they're just missing the point of like really interesting textural color play. Also, she's using the art supplies as opposed to letting them rot. And that is a thing that will happen with art supplies. So I'm not like here to be her evangelist or anything like that. I just want to like, because I feel like I'm probably going to say some not so nice things about her watercolor palette in particular. I want to say that in general, I like her work. Now, another thing I have noticed, and we're going to see this over and over and over again with art influencers, is that they always are running courses. Some of them are art courses, and then some of them are revenue courses, which, you know, as somebody who's not making a whole lot of money, I'm always tempted to pay the money and try these out. But I'd really like to know, and I mean like all the art influencers, including the ones who just started three years ago, all of them are offering this art revenue coaching. Um, I kind of don't think they have much to say to a comic artist because while we both make art, our lives are so different. Our art lives are so different. Our audiences are so different. The ways of making money are so different. And if you guys are interested in learning more about like, how comic artists do and don't make money. You can watch my Comics Broke Me vlog. Um, you can also watch my vlog about where I talk about why I particularly chose self-publishing, but like there isn't a lot of money or a lot of respect for cartoony and comic style art. It tends to get treated very poorly. So while I'm always a little curious about these kind of art revenue courses and if I could get a little sample to see if it would be worth the money and if they could provide some really salient advice, I'd be happy to pay it. I have my doubts because often these courses are a very one size fits all sort of thing. Although, since this is free, I may I may I may see if that's a good fit, right? 
anyway, her art's very cool. She does a lot of watercolor. She does a lot of acrylic. As someone who is not into acrylic all that much, that's not what I'm going to, like, talk to you guys about. We looked at the watercolor. She also sells her original paintings. Does she have any up for sale? No, she doesn't. Also, they're fairly expensive, but not as expensive as I would have thought. So that's kind of neat. I mean, let's be real. Like, artists should get their coin, but it is so hard to convince people to pay, say, $100 for an original watercolor painting, which breaks my heart, but you know. Um, I know a lot of the money also comes from, like, licensing things out, which is obviously very smart. And this is what we've already seen. So that is her main website, and I'm so sorry. So I have a ginormous monitor, and it makes it really hard to frame things up for y'all. So apologies for that. Um, hopefully I didn't lose you too much. But I want to go back just a little bit more, because I think it's really important for us to talk about what the influencers make, how they present themselves online, that sort of stuff. While And I know I have a bajillion tabs. While we're talking about the products that they're selling, because I think looking at the fame they've accrued and the fan base they've accrued and maybe the loyalty that they've accrued, I think that is important when talking about um, like what they're charging, what the expectation should be, and why people might be willing to spend what they're willing to spend. So that's one of hers with her little box. I mean, look, it's like a very basic mead and palette. I'm not talking and trying to talk to smack. But I mean, as a watercolor reviewer, I'm not really seeing anything. It's great for this, very straightforward, not a lot of color mixing, but I do not feel like it's going to be like the best for the kind of work that I do. So I'm super duper appreciative to Mary Catherine for sending this to me so that I didn't have to pay for it because I, <laughs> I would have been more bitter about it. But you guys can see while there is some watercolor stuff here, there is a lot of the like um, acrylics with a gel medium, heavy body acrylics. Um, she does a lot of like color mixing demonstrations where she mixes the huge cups of water. Like she is very much about color and color play. And I mean, to be real, as an artist, this kind of art tends to get treated very poorly because people don't really appreciate the work and the intelligence that goes into color mixing and color theory, even with just rainbows, creating these like, um, I don't know how to say it. All of these are in the same sort of saturation family, even though we have a wide array of colors, right? So like that takes a lot of experience with the material to be able to do that. And also it creates a very aesthetic page, whereas my Instagram page, I'll show y'all in a minute, just for context, just so you know who you're dealing with. But uh, my page is not nearly that aesthetic. Now, this is why I do mention uh, the haters is because she talks about the people who don't like her stuff a lot and um you know i i can i can understand that i've used to get a lot of garbage from people saying that i was full of myself that i didn't have the right to like review <laughs> supplies that i bought out of pocket so um you know you could you could you could you could hate anything if you set your mind to it um i and we're told not to like not to address the trolls, but I do think that she tends to do not, these are not the best example, but she does tend to do like a really funny take on it. And she generally tends to be in good humor about it. And I, I have to just not engage at all. Cause I have RSD and it will, I'll get like seriously butthurt when people are mad and have to walk away for the day and go get a snowball or something, but I don't engage. So, um, Unless I think it was a good faith complaint that is worth addressing and then I'll engage. So just for context, I know y'all are all adult people who can check out your own, check this out on your own and I hope you will. But this is, this is me and this is what I do. I do a lot of cute tiny people art with watercolor, a lot of figurative art. 
Um, I do a lot of reels where I show my process. I do a lot of really quick drawing tutorials. So um, <laughs> my Instagram is obviously not as aesthetic, but I do hope there's a lot of free art educational stuff here for you guys. I don't really share a whole lot of my personal life to my Instagram um, because I like to keep that boundary of private and personal for the most part. Um, but I am a real human and a real person who cares about real things. And I've, I've been accused of also being just like a shell and not being a real person before. So I don't know. But see, this one is mine. And now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, mine's really cute. But it was cuter when I was just doing like the normal grid spreads instead of trying to make use of reels and sharing mini tutorials and stuff. But anyway, I hope you guys will check out my Instagram as well as my tutorials and my shop because that would really mean a lot to me. No, I don't have a watercolor palette to sell to you guys. So her Instagram is the main way that I am familiar with her work. And frankly, Instagram is getting more and more where I don't see any of the stuff I want to see anymore. Any of the artists I follow, it's all recommended stuff from Reels. So she does have a YouTube channel. I'll hit subscribe um, in case you guys want to see more of her work. But there is not necessarily a thousand videos, but a lot of them are shorts. Anyway, it's not a lot of like just tutorials. It's a lot of like this kind of stuff, which generally tends to do really well. I'm surprised that she doesn't have more views, honestly, considering, you know, this is always an interesting and sometimes humbling exercise when you see an artist who's way more popular on Instagram. So you just assume they're going to be way more popular than you on every platform. And she does have the followers right but then the views are about what mine are so it's hard man it is hard doing art content on the internet everybody would like to make art but no one wants to actually take the time to do the thing so um actually i will probably save this to watch later because i was thinking about i do have a shop but i was thinking about starting an etsy for people who are not familiar with my work who might be interested in uh I don't know, Louisiana art, for example. And I am going to talk about myself a whole lot in this series. I am sorry because I think I am like kind of fascinated by influencers in general, particularly like art influencers and clothes, not fashion influencers, do not care about that. But like the people who do sewing, so sewing and historical reenactment influencers. And I mean, doing having a YouTube channel for over seven years and having a TikTok and having a Twitter since Twitter was born, like... I do have a dog in the race. I do have things to say and talk about that I think are interesting. And this video is going to be super long and I am so sorry. But her Facebook is all, oh yeah, this is what I've been seeing a lot of. And I don't know why this hasn't been showing up on her Instagram because it's been showing up on my Instagram from her, but she's been doing a lot of reels with the jelly plate printing, which I'm sorry if any of you guys are interested in me doing that. I am very unlikely to do that. I love printmaking. I am not interested in mono prints though. I am interested in multiple editions of the same print and then being able to sell those at an affordable price. So, you know, just different. But she does a lot of very accessible art techniques, right? Things that don't really require a lot of drawing skill. They do re require color theory and they require a lot of patience. Um, I'm not like knocking her art at all, but I can see why her stuff is super popular with people who would like to make art, but maybe haven't gotten very far along in it yet. Because as an art teacher, one of the things I see with adults is if they have to draw, they're not going to do it. With kids, the drawing does not stop them. With adults, the drawing is the big hindrance. And when I teach adult watercolor classes, I usually have to provide um, a pre-printed template or blue lines to encourage them to draw and paint along. But I just want to take a moment to tell you guys, like, even if you don't like how you draw, even if you don't draw to the level you want to draw it, the fact that you are drawing as an adult at all is amazing and very cool. And um, I know, like, other adults don't appreciate it enough. I know that, believe me, firsthand. But I think you're awesome, and you're watching my video right now, so that should count for something. I'm so impressed she's not dripping all over the place because I would be dripping all over the place, especially with a big, flat synthetic like that. It would just be going all over the place but it seems like her facebook is mostly a, a place to like pop her reels nothing wrong with that at all i do that as well so we've kind of gotten an idea 
for who we're looking at today. I am super surprised she doesn't do like the jelly gouache and she doesn't sell the acrylic supplies. Like some artists will have like an Amazon affiliate thing set up. I technically I could do that. Um, I am lazy. <laughs> Um, but you know where you have like all your favorite supplies curated so I am this was this is not like the full packaging and keep in mind because this was sent to me this is not this is a used set there was also I believe an additional color that MCAT told me about so give me a sec so she sent me some notes via discord that I'm going to read to you guys for additional context she added paper towels folded up between the pans and covers so they wouldn't rattle all the way to me. Cleaned off the inside of the lid, but it has stained a little bit. That's pretty normal with like enamel, especially when it comes to like phthalo colors. They tend to stain a lot. Only use water and a paper towel. You may have better luck with soap. Sometimes melamine slash Mr. Clean dry erasers can get that off. But if it is sci if it's phthalo stained, it is saying phthalo stained. It comes with an accidental extra color, which is popped into the middle row. It doesn't match the rainbow vibe. The package came with some note about a manufacturing mistake. I will read that note to you guys in a minute. Also, it doesn't, it also came with a swatch card that I painted and forgot to add to the envelope. And now I can't find it. It had names for each color on it. I will dig that up in a minute. I, I think actually she sent me a picture of that. So I do have that. Um, it came in this box, which is white on all other sides. I will include a photo of that as well because she sent it to me. The list price just for the paint is 40 bucks, but she got it in a Christmas bundle. I was actually thinking about ordering it back at Christmas, <laughs> but it was kind of expensive to uh, plop $40 on it while I was in the middle of the student grade showdown. So I couldn't justify it. So I appreciate that MCAT took the plunge. So I didn't have to. It did come with a 500 piece puzzle, uh, a 5x7 textured acrylic painting, a set of four synthetic round brushes, and they are all gold tacklon, a branded pen, one or two medium sized stickers, the glossy paper not waterproof, one or two fridge magnets, a postcard, five original watercolor greeting cards with fairly simple rainbows on them, but all different. And all of that was 80 with free shipping, which I think is pretty decent. This middle pan here, and these are Mungyo paints. These are Mungyo paints. I know what Mungyo looks like. These are Mungyo paints. You can get the 48 palette of these for less than what Josie Lewis is asking for. Y'all, y'all kill me. This is why I'm doing the Art Influencer Review, because I, I know, and I know a little smidgen about, um, a very little smidgen about margins, manufacturing, and white labeling, mostly from a reviewer standpoint, but as somebody who makes prints and postcards and stickers and books, I do know a little bitty bit about finding manufacturers and finding printers and trying to find a price point that will work for as many people as possible while not losing the shirt off your back. But I really didn't think she specifically worked with a company that she truly, really genuinely loved to produce kind of like Denise Soden does with Da Vinci. Um, I didn't really think that was going to be the case with this. Just, just looking at the photos and looking at the swatches and looking at the colors included in this set where we have so many optical brighteners but um we'll, we're, we're still gonna swatch it but just keep in mind i have reviewed mungyo watercolors at this point so many times because jane davenport does mungyo prima does mungyo mungyo does mungyo and now josie lewis does mungyo so the note said Extra paint alert, you get an extra color. Inside the travel kit, you'll find a Van Dyke Brown, labeled number 83, rather than the intended Twilight Maroon. Here is the replacement maroon. Happy painting, Josie. So on that note, I do appreciate, you know, including that color to make up for it so that you do get that rainbow -liciousness. Um, The packaging itself is <laughs> super, super duper basic. Uh, my recommendation would be instead of a, uh, white sticker like this get the clear stickers and get it with like a gold foil or an opaque color and that'll blend in a little bit better with the packaging or I don't know work with a different manufacturer for the palette but I might be being a little bit too too much okay so obviously since this is Mungyo this is going to put us 
this is definitely part of the art influencer. I don't, I haven't decided what I'm going to call this series yet, but it's definitely art influencer products and maybe some books. I do have some books that I might want to, I might do an in video where I, if I'm, okay. So, I, so for the Christy Rice palette, I have the Christy Rice book coming in and also she's got a YouTube channel. That one I'm a little anxious to do. Um, just not looking for beef. And often when we're working with mass produced watercolors, there's a chance for beef. Not looking for beef here. These are for, uh, it's kind of like book reviews, right? These, these reviews are not really for the authors. They're not for the original artist. They are for the customer who wants to know if it's worth their money and worth their time, right? So, um, a little nervous about that. But with the Christy Rice ones, I'm going to talk about her book and I'm going to talk about the palette in the same video. Um, Generally, the trajectory that I see is uh, online, well, okay, YouTube channel, you get super popular on YouTube, you start doing online courses, then you get a book deal, usually from like Page Street, Page Street likes to do the watercolor books, and then you might start offering art supplies, or you do an Etsy, you do kits, and uh, maybe you start milling your own watercolors. That's like the duality of art supply influencers. Except for me, I make comics because I'm crazy like that. So um, this is gonna put us firmly in the student grade showdown territory because we do have Mungyo paints with us today. So what I am going to do is I am going to swatch these. I will probably do some color mixing. And I will pull out my other Mungyo palettes as well as, you know, talk about my other experiences with Mungyo. Because since we have seen these paints before, I am hesitant to justify doing all the tests that I would normally do. I would rather just point you to those reviews and you can check it out there. But uh, without having swatched these and knowing, you, you want to know how I know these are Mungyo? Mungyo are the only paints I know of. Well, first of all, they, they look, they have the color gamut that Mungyo paints have, and we'll talk about that more. But they also have that, that grittiness that Mungyo paints have, and I have not encountered that grittiness with any other professionally milled watercolor paints. Just Mungyo, and I have reviewed so many palettes that turn out to be Mungyo that I have a lot of experience with Mungyo. So, first off, I want to, again, thank Mary Catherine for sending me this so I didn't have to buy it because I would be so annoyed if I had realized, if this, if, if, you know, I bought it and it turned out to be a Mungyo set and I paid the 30 to $40 that it's going for now because I have these colors. I have these colors multiple times over and the Mungyo sets, if you get them on Amazon, are cheaper than this. So that's already like a big, I also kind of don't appreciate that Josie was not honest about the manufacturer of these paints. Um, at least not that I saw it. She didn't lie. She just never disclosed who made them. So uh, I'm going to call you out on that because that's not, that's not cool. Um, I really don't care about like the price point you're charging, especially if you're throwing in extras like templates, original art, postcards. Like it sounds like Mary Catherine got a super good deal with these. So like, I'm not going to complain about that, but I do wish you would disclose the manufacturer. And if you have the pigment info available, I wish you would disclose the pigment info because that is important. And if you are selling these as a tool for people to learn watercolor with, that is important for them. They may not realize it at this moment, but it will become important to them later on. So the colors in this set, and it looks like she swatched in order, bless, are Opera Pink, Naphthal Red, Burnt Orange, Lemon Yellow, Thalo Yellow Green, Sky Blue, a color she calls Twilight Maroon, which might be unique to her because I don't really recognize this color. Royal Purple, Blue Jeans Blue, Ultramarine Blue, Ultramarine Turquoise, Thalo Blue Green Shade, and from the swatch it looks more like a Viridian than a Thalo Blue, and then this is Van Dyke Brown. No pigment info. Now, I didn't get the box. But Mary Catherine did not say there was any kind of literature information instructions in the box. And she's a pretty thorough person. So I'm assuming she would have told me that if it was there. So uh, don't, don't, don't super love that either when you're like white labeling a product and then you don't add anything to make it your own. And this was 
kind of sort of my complaints with the Amy Tangerine palette and the Jane Davenport palettes. And look, I am not important enough to have a palette. I am not important enough for any watercolor company to work with me. Please, Core, call me. I would love to work with you. But I promise you guys, if I ever release a palette, I will disclose who the manufacturer is. I will disclose to the best of my ability the pigment information because I think it is super important. And I will probably include a care sheet on how to get started with watercolor, some links for you guys to check out, as well as like, you know, cleaning out your palette, letting your watercolors dry, that kind of basic stuff. Because in my opinion, as a watercolor teacher, a watercolor artist, and a watercolor reviewer, I think these kind of things, when they're meant for beginners, they should be as inclusive as possible. So if you give it as a gift, the person who receives it can get going almost immediately. Um, obviously, there was no brush and no paper included. I get that. Um, I love seeing those, by the way, in beginner sets. Now, MCAT did get the set of five brushes, but didn't get the watercolor paper. So, um, you know, but I would, if you're going to market it as a kit for beginners, I do like to see, or maybe like a couple of her postcards with the printout already on it so you could paint along with it. it would be a nice touch that would personalize it and would help justify the price because this is just a Mungyo palette. So just because we are reviewing influencer student grade watercolors, that does not mean we are going to switch up what we're doing today. So we are going to swatch these on Blick Studio Cotton Rag watercolor paper. It is the same watercolor paper that I've been using throughout the student grade showdown. So you guys can imagine how expensive that gets. We are going to use the smaller one because we only have 13 colors to swatch. And I'm going to be looking for, well, I mean, look, let's be real. I've already reviewed the Mungyo watercolors. I know what the Mungyo watercolors are going to do. So really, we're going to be swatching these so you guys can see the colors and so that we can talk about some of the properties that the Josie Lewis Art watercolors, but also Mungyo watercolors in general have. So I am putting down a black stripe so we can swatch the opacity of these and I'm gonna go get a cup of clean water and a couple of watercolor brushes and be right back. Hang on. These watercolors muddy the water pretty quickly. The color selection itself really lends itself mainly for painting rainbows and very brightly colored things without a whole lot of color mixing. But the choice of just one yellow is rather interesting as there's three greens and three blues. These are fairly quick to activate and don't overly glob up on the brush. Decently easy to control the color without a spare mixing palette. There isn't a lot of granulation in these colors. The colors do rush to fill the area with water, so you're not going to get gradation, but that's not necessarily in a way that points to a lot of dyes being used. Here's proof of just how much these muddy the water. We've got some chocolate milk going on here. While I wait for these paints to fit out they're pretty dry, I'm going to do some color mixing. Now, when we reviewed this as a Mungyo set, I did more color mixing. I'm not going to be going as in-depth because I really want you guys to check out the Mungyo video and see if just buying them from the source is a better option for you. But I did want to see if Josie's selection of colors in this little palette here lends itself to just some basic color mixing that you would need to be able to do if you were going to just use this as a palette. Now, I know this is probably not really what she had in mind, so I am going to do a bookmark towards the end of this review that's more inspired by her work to see how well these handle for the kind of watercolor that she typically tends to do. While there are some interesting colors in this set, at full saturation or unmixed, a lot of them kind of lose their brilliance and become way less interesting as they dry. Same colors, but better quality paints would yield much more brilliant mixing results. I'm honestly kind of surprised she isn't working with Core or Da Vinci for this one. 
The colors mixed go down very bright, but they dry pretty dull and unimpressive. So don't judge by this. I'm also using, or I'm also swatching the two base colors that I mixed to get this secondary color so that you guys can see what color mixes are available and also to serve as inspiration for me in the future when I'm playing around with some nicer quality watercolors that can actually stand up to these kind of color mixes. It would be so fun to do a hangout with you guys where we just mix unusual colors together and see what we get. the paints in this palette are pretty easy to lift don't really take a whole lot of scrubbing part of that may be though that there is so much color going on here that it's very easy for them to lift up but I don't think that's what's going on So to test these out, I wanted to try doing a bookmark inspired by her work and some of the techniques that I have seen. So we are going to use masking tape to tape down a Stonehenge Aqua bookmark, pretty similar to my other Stash Buster bookmarks in my Stash Buster bookmark series. And I'm using thinner washi tape. This is actually MT washi tape for the second one. And I am blocking off like rectangles and irregular angular shapes and we're going to fill this in with watercolor. This will hopefully allow me to judge the paint and the color selection on Josie's terms and it might be more fair to her target audience and might provide you guys with the information that you need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the wet edges technique that Josie has demonstrated where we wet down an area and then we add the color around the exterior. Now sometimes what she'll do is she'll do a really light wash of the color and then while that's still wet, go in with a more saturated wash of the same color. Either of those would work. Both of those will result in really cute, uh, finished art like both are valid right but I wanted to go with something pretty simple and pretty straightforward even replicating Josie's techniques I feel like these watercolors are very meh if she had gone with a brand that had more granulation that might work better for these single color mixes in this sort of use case they feel very flat so while researching art influencers for this series I've realized how many of them offer art coaching and I don't mean they'll help you improve your art I mean they promise that they can help you make money off of your art and I am so tempted to do a little vlog rant about that at a later date because I feel like that is a tall promise to make especially when many of them are not delivering much in terms of results I've already downloaded some of Josie's more free information on how to do that and found it to be pretty lackluster and full of information that I already knew I'm including a little hyperlapse of the watercolors drawing because for me, there's very little more satisfying than watching paint dry at hyper speed. And once it's fully dry, we're gonna carefully remove our masking tape. I do wanna point out that Stonehenge can sometimes tear with masking tape. So if you want this to be more successful, I recommend working with a different cotton rag watercolor paper, something with more surface sizing on the exterior surface. So we tried doing a bookmark inspired by Josie Lewis. So I told you guys I am almost 100% sure this is the Mung Yo watercolor palette. The same Mung Yo watercolor palette that I reviewed earlier in the student grade showdown. So here are the swatches. Let me pull you guys back out. Here are the swatches from the 48-piece Mungyo set. So this was purchased off of Amazon. Depending on what's going on, whether there's a sale going on, whether it's Prime Day or Black Friday or what have you, you may pay more for this set than the 40... I don't think you're going to pay more than 
um, than the $30 sale price for the Josie Lewis set, or you may pay less, again, depending on what's going on. 48 colors, there are some metallics, they're kind of unimpressive. There's some very bright colors. This set does have a lot of optical brighteners going on because it wants to be impressive. This is the palette that like almost everybody white labels and we'll talk about that in a little bit. So here are the full 48 swatches. As you guys can see, there's definitely some opacity, not necessarily a whole lot of granulation, although a couple of the colors do granulate. And there's a lot of grittiness and texture to these watercolors. And that's not really, granulation is good. Grittiness is not good. And they're two very different things. And then this is the wet into wet test. So we do get some decent diffusion for like really, really loose mixes. We do see some granulation, but we also see some haloing with some of the colors like these yellows here where you can see some of the white there. And that's a pretty clear indication that there is too much optical brightener being used and that it is kind of disrupting how the paints themselves should handle. Mung Yeo are not really my favorite watercolors. Now, when I was reviewing them in their Jane Davenport and Prima marketing forms, I did actually do field tests with them. So I am going to link some snippets and talk to you guys about those palettes here. They are the same size, 12 color palette. And I know this is technically 13, but keep in mind one of these colors was thrown in there because they'd included the wrong color at first. Um, 12 color palettes themed around like tropicals, basic neutrals, things like that. And they're about the same price point, but they frequently go on sale. Let's start out with the original Meng Yo watercolor palette for these little comparative short reviews. This is a 48 half pan watercolor palette. You do have some metallics in here, but you have a pretty wide color range to choose from. All of these are still kind of gritty, kind of pebbly in texture, which may ruin your brushes depending on what kind of brushes you're using. Generally, the recommended advice is to pre-activate your watercolors before you start scrubbing them. They are all wrapped with a paper belly band and then they have a plastic interior, I believe. I might be misremembering, but I have a full review of this palette here on the channel if you're curious about this. If you really want the Josie Lewis style of watercolors, this is what she's using and this will offer you an even bigger rainbow of colors to select from. It also costs about the same price as the Josie Lewis watercolors. So you may find this to be a better deal for your money. They still muddy the water. It's the same watercolors. They're going to handle the same. I prefer the larger color gamut though because you do have more selection for all those pretty rainbows. That said, if you buy this palette, you will not be able to support Josie by buying her watercolors. But like I recommended earlier, I would say buy some of her art, buy some of her puzzles. That's going to be a more direct way of supporting the work that she does. I found that while unmixed, these colors are very vibrant and I still need to do a full field test with the 48 half pan set. When you start layering and mixing them, there are some issues with the opacity and the binders and the extenders getting in the way. So I mentioned that a lot of companies will white label from from Mungyo, Prima Marketing is one of those companies and we'll talk about that more in a little bit. Uh, this is the Prima Marketing Tropical set. I believe I bought this at Michael's or I may have gotten it on Amazon years ago. This is another little 12 half pan set, really bright, vibrant color selection. Frankly, these colors strike me more as Josie Lewis colors than the colors in her palette necessarily. I had fun painting with these at the time. I think I got this palette on sale for about half off, which would put it about $12 to $15. Amazon is really weird because some of these palettes are going to be like $12. Some of them are going to be $21 and some of them are going to be $30. And there's not really any rhyme or, rhyme or reason as to why. Primo went to a lot of trouble to repackage these in a way that felt more 
like Prima Marketing watercolors. So this is the illustration that I did for the field test. It was done on Mossery uh, cellulose watercolor paper, and I just taped it down to give it some additional support. I believe it was also inked with a fountain pen using pigment-based ink, but honestly, I don't really remember. So I found this palette sufficient for the illustration that I painted here. I didn't necessarily do a lot of color mixing. I kind of wanted to work with what the palette had to offer rather than attempting to mix skin tones and attempting to mix all these different colors. So I kind of let the tropical theme of this palette really inspire the art that it created. That said, I did do a fair amount of layering and glazing and found that they they behaved suitably well. Nothing really stood out to me as being particularly terrible. Of the color selection, the Tropical palette is probably my favorite of the palettes that I own. I was really tempted to buy the Odyssey palette for a long time, but it was pretty expensive. The colors in the Odyssey palette are also very pretty, but honestly, if you have the 48 Half Pan Mungyo set, you will probably have all these colors and you could just curate based on the colors in those sets. So with most of these white lab labeling companies, they don't provide pigment information, they don't give you the original names of the paints, and they sure are not telling you that these paints were originally from Meng Yeo. As part of my student grade showdown, we have talked a lot about white labeling, and I have the feeling we're gonna talk a lot about white labeling in the Art Influencer, I don't know what I'm gonna call it yet, in this, this series as well. So this is the classic set. I like the Tropicals set well enough that when the classic set went on sale, I decided to pick this set up as well. It's a slightly different color selection than the Tropical set. It's really like when you think of classics, when they're talking about classic colors, they don't mean your classic mixing colors, like your cool yellow, your warm yellow, your cool red, your warm red, your cool blue, your warm blue, etc. They're It's like Crayola classic colors, like really bright primary colors, a hot pink, a red, an orange, a yellow, a green, maybe a teal, a blue, a purple, a brown, a gray, a black. Not really that easy to mix or paint with. This is the little field test that I did with that palette. This was done on Fabriano's card paper, which is a 100% cotton rag. It's not really meant for watercolor, but it accepts watercolor really well. With this one, I wanted to do more with it. So I did a lot more color mixing in terms of mixing up her skin tone and more wet into wet in terms of adding in the blush and then glazing by building up her hair into kind of a ginger color or a coppery color. We also did salt techniques with the blue in the gray in the background. I was really trying to stretch not only myself and the techniques that I was using for this, but also stretch what I was looking for in these watercolors. And they performed fine. They were not, the, the cotton rag paper is better to paint on than the cellulose watercolor paper. You can do more with it. You can do more wet into wet and more layering and more glazing techniques. So if you're looking for a way to upgrade your watercolor painting, it might be time to switch from cellulose to cotton rag, at least to try for some of your, your projects. And I bought like a hundred pack of these little cards at Dick Blick or Utrecht or maybe it was even when primary was in Savannah years ago and I still have them so there are certain investments you can make that will just last a really long time depending on how you do it and I wish I could find this little pack now because uh, looking back on this, I'm like, this took watercolor a lot better than I expected it to. And I used to use this for all my field tests. Now I kind of switch up what I do field tests on depending on the paints and depending on what I feel like doing. So this is the Jane Davenport Bright set. It is almost the same as the Prima Marketing Classics set in terms of color range. However, Jane subbed out the kind of boring black Prima Marketing palette for a more colorful palette. This one's in a really cute teal color and it also has her name screened on it. Also the packaging itself has more personality and she also included a little swatch card here that has her branding on it. Um, all of these little half pans were individually wrapped with her own uh, packaging, her own marketing on it. And I apologize for that noise. I didn't realize I had Discord still up. Sorry about that. 
So I feel like she really went to better lengths to try and make this her own and make it feel like her own product and kind of remove it from its Mungyo roots. But these are still Mungyo watercolors. And she also subbed in a few different colors. Like we have a brighter green included here. And we also have like an alizarin crimson included here. But it's it's still the Mungyo. So here is the field test for the Jane Davenport Brights. It's on the same paper that the Classics field test was on. And I just wanted to paint a fun little scene, do some color mixing, do some layering, really try to make the best use of these colors and to demonstrate what they're capable of, just to see for myself if they were worth it for me. The Jane Davenport watercolors are, in my opinion, pretty overpriced. Um, they are usually in around the $30 range. I think I bought these when Michaels was selling a lot of Jane Davenport stuff, but kind of towards the end of that when they were clearing out a lot of the Jane Davenport stuff. So I probably bought this at about half off. It's fine. It's not a great palette. It's a Mungyo palette. It's fine. Um, there wasn't really anything about any of these little 12 piece palettes that are exciting or feel innovative or feel like the person whose name is on the exterior of the package really put their mark on it. I think of the people who have done that with this Mungyo set that I'm aware of, Jane Davenport has done the best job so far, but she also has more resources and she gets a lot of stuff. I see a lot of her stuff in her newsletter. It's from AliExpress or it comes from the tattoo world. Like she's always looking elsewhere for things that she can bring and repurpose into her line. And uh, I think it's all overpriced, but I definitely respect the heck out of the hustle. So this is the Jane Davenport neutral set. It's supposed to be more skin tones, more like lipstick, that kind of things. Um, I feel like the inclusion of the gray and the white is just a waste in a palette like this because with watercolor, I find that watercolor whites are useless. I usually just sub in white gouache and generally you want to try to leave the white of the paper for your highlights. So yeah, I know you can technically mix pastels using watercolor white, but you can also technically mix pastels by just mixing them less saturated, but they're not gonna necessarily have the covering power, but watercolor white typically doesn't have that much covering power anyway. Anyway, the palette itself is this really cute gold color, but the whole rest of this palette is a snooze fest. It just was uninspiring for me. I didn't really have fun with it. I didn't really like the color selection. I didn't feel like the skin tones really did anything for me. So that's why you don't see a field test with this palette palette is because I think I was just kind of burnt out reviewing these inexpensive, well, these inexpensive to produce, but kind of pricey to buy Mungyo repackaged sets, especially because by this point, someone in the paint box had told me these are all just Mungyo. I did, however, buy the Primo Marketing Pastel Dreams. Um, because you can't get, these are Mungyo still, but you can't find these pastel colors in the 48 half pan Mungyo palette. So I felt like it was worth taking a look at, seeing how they compare. I swatched them on black paper here. This is not a black watercolor paper. I think I did this before black watercolor paper was available. If you guys are interested, I will dig these up and re-swatch them on black Stonehenge. If you're curious, they may perform a little bit better. Some of these black papers that are not watercolor safe, the dyes will reactivate and kind of pollute your watercolors. So it can be kind of hard to see exactly what you're getting and what these are capable of. That said, I thought these were fun. They were a little bit different. They're not what you can easily get from Mungyo. There's been a few different companies that have been offering pastel watercolors lately. These are probably some of the best. The weird chunky grittiness of Mungyo works well for this. What are my pros and cons for this Josie Lewis watercolor palette? We're gonna start on a positive note. We're gonna start with the pros. If you enjoy Josie Lewis's art and wanna help support what she does, you can order this set from her. It is not the worst or the cheapest of the available white label watercolor set options. All right, so now for the tea. To get this set, you're going to have to order it from Josie Lewis. So if you happen to like this particular 
arrangement of colors if you happen to want her branding on it etc you're gonna have to order it from her that said this is super similar to the selection in the some of the jane davenport mung yo palettes and some of the prima marketing mung yo palettes so if you really don't want the 48 piece set you could order from them they are kind of overpriced because they're a white label product and you would get this curated set but for just a little bit more or the same amount of money you could just get the 48 piece set directly from the source are you supporting the art influencer no and maybe that is something you want to do as an artist i am not here to discourage you from supporting other artists i'm here to encourage you to support other artists i just think a better use of your money in that instance would be to buy her templates or to take one of her courses if you want to take one of her courses or to buy an original piece of art from her or to buy one of her puzzles this palette is not really her enough. It doesn't come with enough of her kind of pack-ins like the templates. It doesn't feel like she put a lot of herself into this palette. Maybe she picked the colors, maybe she put her sticker on it, and maybe she uses it when she makes her watercolor art, but it doesn't really feel like a lot of her thought and care went into it, which was my same complaint with the Amy Tangerine palette. And it's one of my frustrations with these art influencer palettes is like, if you're going to do this, I don't know if you're doing it of your own volition and you're doing all your own research, research, or if a company is approaching you and asking to partner with you, this is a real opportunity to put your, your grubby little hands all over it, to really make it yours and make it stinky like you. And um, they're not really doing that. And I really don't understand why, because to me, that would be the fun part of this. This is also not ideal as a mixing set. Yes, you can mix some colors. There's some interesting colors in this set, but they dry kind of desaturated and unimpressive. If we were working with a more professional set, like if we were working with say Da Vinci watercolors or Holbein watercolors, we could use the same types of colors, mix them together and get some really vibrant and pretty mixes. So it is also very much a student grade watercolor palette. And all in all, I find it to just be very underwhelming. Now, I have not reviewed all that many art influencer watercolor supplies or palettes yet. I'm really kind of just getting started with this. But I'm, I think this, okay, let's see. We did the Jane Davenport. I will count her as an art influencer. I have reviewed some of the Ranger Tim Holtz, like that umbrella company, some of their artist products from individual artists. Not super excited about that. I reviewed the Amy Tangerine palette. So we're like at four, maybe five. And uh, this just seems to be really kind of par for the course. Um, th and what frustrates me about this, and uh, this can kind of segue into the verdict, is they will talk big talk on Instagram, on YouTube, about how much care and thought and energy goes into these sets. They'll really sell you, and I buy in. I'm a sucker. I'm like, oh yeah, that sounds good. I look forward to seeing what you bring to the table. I'm looking for something really unique that has your fingerprints on it. And then when you get it, it it's, it's like they just didn't follow it all the way through. And as an artist, and as someone with a small but very loyal following, thank you guys, I, I am annoyed by it because it's like, but you had the opportunity to do better and do something really cool and you just decided not to. And um, that's kind of disappointing. I mean, you see artists on Etsy, you see artists on YouTube who don't have the opportunities and don't have the audience and don't have the reach doing really, really cool things with very, very little. So it's kind of frustrating to see someone have the opportunity to do something really cool and really put their mark on it and they just decide not to do that. For example, Maiden sells some very cute empty palettes. I, I know where one is and I have a bunch of junk on top of it so I guess I'm not going to pull it out. But they sell these really colorful palettes. You can get empty watercolor palettes very cheaply in a variety of colors. Josie is known for her rainbow art and her love of color. That would be super cute. She could have gone with a clear sticker instead of this very inexpensive, kind of small, frankly, little sticker. She could have done a big sticker across. 
That would have been very cute. She could have thrown in a water brush. Everybody else is throwing in a water brush. That would have been cute and inexpensive. She could have thrown in some small pre-printed postcards. That would have been cute and inexpensive. There are ways that you can take a baseline set like this and really make it something more. And on the one hand, in my Art Influencer Art Supply Series, I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing some sets that do that. Haven't opened the Christy Rice set yet. Come on, y'all. Fingers crossed. Don't let me down, Christy. And I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on some of the Frugal Crafters Deal Around -y teaching series. I can't find those for love or money. I don't know where they're selling those. I'm, I want to get ideas for things that I might want to offer myself or for things that I might want to recommend to you guys or that I just might want to have for myself to enjoy. Like Bean Paints has this like watercolor calendar where it's got a printed out line art and I, I assume it comes with some of their paints and it's on really nice paper and once a month you paint a little something. I love that idea. That is so cute. I want to see that. I want to see an opportunity for fans of the artist or fellow artists to hang out with the artist by getting to use their favorite materials. So that's why I'm kind of harsh when the sets that have their names on it that they're promoting, that they're swearing by, are just kind of lackluster sets. I mean, to be real, Josie, if you are using this set and you're selling your original watercolors, you are promising. I know I copied it. I'm so sorry. Give me a sec, y'all. This is from her site. I will link it for you guys. She is saying this is her everyday set. She is claiming that these are archival and light fast. She is claiming these have a high pigment load, thrilling vibrancy, and beautiful transparency. I... This is an opera rose right here. I seriously doubt that's going to be very light fast. That's just historically not light fast. And Mungyo does make their pigment information available. As I showed you guys, she could make that pigment information available as well. And she's choosing not to. I didn't have to dig hard. It was on the Amazon page to find it. Um, she's also promising high pigment load. Well, if these are Mungyo like I am 99.9% .9 sure they are, Mungyo has a fair amount of extenders and optical brighteners in their paints. I wouldn't call that a high pigment load. And they are fairly opaque watercolors and not particularly transparent. And the mixes are just not as thrilling and vibrant as they should be. And I don't mean to be super harsh, but any claim you make on your sales listing is a claim I'm going to hold you to. It's right there. I'm not holding anybody accountable for anything they're not saying. So I do I think she's like a bad person? Am I calling you to boycott her? Absolutely not. No, indeed. That is not what I'm doing. What I am doing is if you are a fan of her work, and you want to buy something from her because you want to support what she does, you want to be encouraging, you want to paint like Josie, buy an original of hers. She has some less expensive originals. Really, her originals are not like ridiculously expensive in the realm of fine art. They're very approachable. I think they're very cute. They just don't match the aesthetic of our home like at all. Um, but buy an original of hers or buy one of her puzzles or buy some of her classes or buy one of her watercolor originals, like buy some of her art, and then buy buy the 48 Mungyo set instead of this set here, and just buy some of her templates, or buy, I have reviewed so many palettes in the Student Grade Showdown, buy the Mei Liang pigments, or buy the Superior palette, or buy a professional grade watercolor set like Holbein or PWC. Don't buy this set. Give her your money by buying her art. This set is, <laughs> there's there's so much better sets out there. So that's kind of my verdict, right? Like, and I, I'm kind of hoping, unless an art influencer is just a terrible person, and I don't think there are, there have been some, as we have found out, who are not very good people. But like, in general, most art influencers are just artists who happen to get very lucky, who happen to have the right time and the right audience and the right sales pitch and the right scripture readings and the right, the right 
persona for the time. And like, there's nothing wrong with that. That doesn't make you a bad person. I'm not saying that. But support the art. You don't have to necessarily buy into the hype. Um... So in this series, I do want to eventually <laughs> look at some of the more expensive, nicer offerings. Like Denise Soden has some palettes with Da Vinci. And um, I like Da Vinci paints a lot. And I like her animal art a lot. So I feel like when I finally save up enough to be able to review that, it's going to be a knock out of the park. You can't go wrong with that. Or some of the Daniel Smith sets I may or may not get because... Um, I have a lot of Daniel Smith watercolors already, and while there are some colors that I really like from Daniel Smith, they're not necessarily my favorite, favorite brand. So, um, also, I'm just not really familiar with those artists. Those are more like fine art world artists than necessarily like art influencers. So, I know Jean Haynes is one of them, and, um, oh, Jane, what's her name? Sorry about that. Do not have my notes in front of me. There are some who fall more into the art influencer category. So I may try to get a hold of some dot cards. But like if we're talking about Da Vinci and we're talking about Daniel Smith, those are kind of known quantities. I will probably talk more about the color selection than the quality of the paints themselves. Because that's what you're really getting when you have um, creator, artist, plus company partnerships is it becomes about like their favorite colors. Um... I don't know that I, <laughs> I could say these are Josie's favorite colors. I mean, they do show up in her work a lot. But if you look at the swatches on her unboxing video, which I'll link, but I'm not going to include here, they are all much more vibrant looking. Like she color graded in such a way to really make them pop than what I'm seeing here, especially with the inclusion of a brown. So um, I don't know. Anyway, if you guys are excited about the Art Influencer Series, like I said, show me some love, show me some support. Also, I'm going to need y'all's help with this. Not just, you know, support through Patreon, which I really appreciate, but like links to art influencers who are doing watercolor sets, art influencer, because that's really what I'm going to. There are not, there are no comic, there are very few, maybe one or two comic artists art influencers. I think Chihiro Howe with o, uh, OLO and it used to be with Copic. Like she is more what I would consider like an art influencer, but there aren't a lot of art influencer comic artists. So I'm not really going to review like a uh, comic art influencer sets. That would be fun for me as a comic artist, but like that's not really so much of an option. So I'm really focusing on watercolor because that's what I do. I do a watercolor comic. That's what I have a boatload of experience with outside of comics. So I'm going to keep it very, very limited to what I do. My advice would be to, um, I mean, I'm not like a, the biggest fan of Mungio watercolor, so I'm kind of biased there, but I understand the price point. She might want to look into superior watercolors to white label from I, or Mei Liang would really be, Mei Liang or Paul Rubens would really be very nice for the price without uh, breaking the bank and would be really nice watercolors. That would be a good direction to maybe look into. But if she could find more ways to personalize the palette and personalize the experience, um, I think that would be a value add that would make this more worthwhile. Even if she saw, I'm sure she's putting the stickers on herself, or I'm assuming she's putting the stickers on herself. Um, if she signed the box or, um, I don't know, I, I'm literally looking at the unboxing video and there's really not much if you get just the base set. So anything she put in that was like a thank you note would probably mean a lot to her fans. Or paintable postcards would probably mean a lot to fa her fans. And she could get those printed in bulk and just include them in or print them herself and cut them down. I mean, that's what I do. Um, anything she can do to make it more a more personal experience would be a step above this because this feels kind of unper impersonal and if I was like a huge fan of hers and I was buying this as a fan of hers I would have been disappointed in it as it was this was sent to me by a fan of hers who is a friend of mine and I appreciate them sending me this because I would not well I would have done this review eventually it just would have taken me longer to get to it and that saved me 30 bucks. So I really do appreciate that because that's $30 that can be put to a different art supply to review for you guys. So that really helps out a lot. 
I'm packing this in with the Josie Lewis review because I'm pretty sure I'm not going to buy these because I recognize them, but I wanted to talk about them. So this is A Dream or A Day Art by Andrea Nelson. Um, I asked on my Discord server, The Paint Box, that if people knew of any art influencers who were selling watercolor palettes or watercolor supplies or even comic supplies to send me some links to help me out. That is, uh, I'm talking about Andrea Nelson here with Josie Lewis because I recognize these palettes and this is why I'm, I'm probably not going to buy any of these, okay? I have seen the Student Grade $24, 24 color Student Grade palette. I have seen this palette on AliExpress numerous times. I have also seen this palette on Temu. It's kind of, sort of like Sakura Koi watercolors, but I just am unlikely to, I, may, I might actually give it and buy this one. It's kind of expensive for what you're getting and the AliExpress version is much cheaper. So I may get it when I see it on AliExpress. Um, but I'm probably not going to buy this palette because uh, I reviewed so many student grade watercolor palettes and this one is not particularly good. So uh, Andrea says that each set includes 24 student grade watercolor paint pans, these are not really paint pans. They are paint chiclets in an extruded plastic case. They're not really pans. One carrying case featuring a removable paint palette with five wells. That would be this here, like what we see with Sakura Koi. One round refillable water brush and one flat refillable water brush. And um, we get the two sponges on the side. Now, I like this format of palette. I like the Sakura Koi format. I, I like Sakura Koi watercolors pretty well. So I'm not like, oh, these look so much like Sakura Koi watercolors. Um, but you can see this really, really cheap, really thin plastic extruded liner that was put into an existing clamshell. Don't see anything really with her branding, anything to give it her personalization. There's no real reason why it is being sold on our site. No rationale. This watercolor set is perfect if you're just starting out with watercolor. This set includes 24 student grade watercolor pans. It offers a range of pigmented colors along with a mixing tray and two water brushes. These student grade paints provide a range of bright colors that will work beautifully for your next watercolor creation. There isn't really even much in the way of swatches or much in the way of art made with this. So if you're an art influencer, right, and you have the potential to convince people to buy products because you say so, then I feel like you are also taking responsibility and vouching for products that you are selling in your shop. So if I seem particularly harsh about things like this, I am, it's for this reason, your good name is attached to these products. So. Another reason I am not going to be buying these. Oh, okay, these actually have their label. Okay, so this is in her shop. This is the classic watercolor paint set. Now this is the reason I am talking about this in the Josie Lewis video because these are Mungyo watercolors and we just took a look at Mungyo watercolors today. Now she's not, she didn't white label these. These are art philosophy watercolors. They used to be Prima marketing. I have probably reviewed either this set. I definitely reviewed the other set I'm going to show you guys on the channel before. So if you're curious, you can watch that. They buy them from Mungyo. They white label them. I seriously doubt they've changed the formulation. This watercolor set is perfect for anyone who is ready to up their watercolor game. This 12 color classic watercolor set includes artist grade, high quality, and highly pigmented watercolor paints. It is sized perfectly for artists on the go with six mixing wells. These professional grade paints provide bright, intense, smooth, and long lasting colors that will help take your watercolor artwork to the next level. Unfortunately, as we talked about, these are Mungyo watercolors. You can get them for about, you can get the 48 pan set for about this price on Amazon. I have reviewed that set as well. And then we have the tropical watercolor set. I've reviewed this same, brand, well, new brand name, different brand name. It was under their Prima Marketing brand name, but same palette, just different packaging, same colors as that palette. So um, I've talked about that here on the channel. I can link it for you guys. Basically says, says the same thing. Doesn't include any of her art. Um, I believe I follow Andrea Nelson on Instagram, but before I, I get um, snitty or anything, let's take a quick look at her art. And I know this is going to get tacked on to the Josie Lewis review. 
Uh, I, I apologize for any of you guys who are hoping for just Josie Lewis or were hoping for a short review. For the ones that I can immediately tell what they are and I know I've reviewed them before, I'm not going to buy them again. That's a waste of money and that is just creating more waste in the environment. But I will tack them on to relevant videos so that, you know, it can answer people's questions. So some of these may be two or even three furs. So her art is gorgeous. I kind of do not think she is using the Prima palettes for this art, but we can dig a little bit deeper. It does look like maybe she's using her student grade palette for this. I don't understand why, if she did paint this with this palette, why she didn't include this in the sales listing, or this looks like it was never even used, like not even at all. So it could be staged. Her art is adorable. It is bright. It is brilliant. It is vibrant. This is not at all about her art. This is about, I guess, holding art influencers accountable and making sure that you guys know what you're getting and you're not overspending and that you're happy with the products that you have. I also follow her on TikTok. I love her TikTok art videos. They are so charming. They are so aimed at students. They're so accessible. They are, they're great. Am I going to follow along with them? No, 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 no. Um, my art needs are different from her art needs, but I, I have had friends who followed along with her tutorials and had a lot of fun with them. I think they would be great. For uh, newer artists, aspiring artists, artists, art students, they're very approachable. So this isn't really about her art. It's about the art supplies, right? Now, her shop does include more than just the watercolor supplies. It also includes actually, you know, some of her art, which is super, well, prints, which is still her art, which is very charming. Um, if you want to support the work that she does, support the tutor tutorials that she creates, if you want to own something, I really would not recommend buying her watercolor palettes. Same as with Josie, I would recommend buying her art prints. That way you can have this inspiration up in your home reminding you of what you like about her art without feeling the frustration of the palettes or overpaying for the palettes. And she's got so many cute things. Now, she does have these watercolor half sheets, super cute, but then it comes with these. These are sold on Amazon as party favors. I bought these before to give away as a freebie. They are horrible. They're really, 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 really bad. Um, so, you know, that's kind of the, the reason I point this out is like, I think an artist who's been painting for a while kind of knows better and they know what they're looking at. But I don't want people who are newer to art and feeling very inspired and very influenced by, you know, this adorable animal art. I don't necessarily want them to be the ones who get burnt because the art supplies don't stand up to what you're seeing on the website. And she may indeed be, I have not watched any of her tutorials for watercolor, so I apologize. A lot of what I see on her TikTok is done with just different grade. I, she doesn't, I have not actually seen her use really professional grade. Like I would not call these professional grade. These are student grade watercolors to me. I've not really seen her use what I would consider to be professional grade watercolors. So like we may just have a different definition of professional grade, but I also haven't seen her use this or this, I don't think. That doesn't mean she doesn't use it. It means I haven't seen it. So I can't definitively be like, oh yeah, she definitely uses this palette here to paint this art here because I just don't know. Um, I would hope she's not putting her, let me make sure we're lined up here. I would hope she's not putting art next to a palette that she didn't use for it. Um, but when I see things like this, where it's like a totally clean palette next to a finished piece of art, it, it, you know what I mean? It's harder for me to tell. But another good use of your money, if you really like her art and you want to support what she does, would be to maybe take an online class from her or to maybe join her online art school. And I do realize that I am possibly poaching myself to say this because like, you know, in this regard, we are offering similar things. Although there is absolutely no reason why you can't take my free art classes and also take her art classes. We do, we handle art very differently. We handle watercolor and the medium and drawing very differently. There's no reason why you couldn't buy both of our prints. You know what I mean? Um, 
but I did want to kind of just check it out with you guys and talk about it with you guys because I don't know I just I get so tired of seeing people get burnt and talk about how they bought like this kit or they bought like this class and just isn't isn't doing it for them so um, I just kind of wanted to use this as an opportunity to use my own experience and my own knowledge and my own art education and my years of reviewing art supplies to help you guys find art supplies you were going to like and I guess in a way de-influence you from art supplies that I think you're either not going to like or you're going to struggle to use or they're not a good fit for a beginner or they are overpriced for what you're getting because they have somebody else's name attached to them. So um, as I said with Josie, I like Andrea's work. I think it's very cute. It's very charming. I think her TikTok videos are super, super cute and accessible. They bring a smile to my face. I love that aspect. I just want to point you in a different direction to consider when it comes to art supplies. So according to her website, her name is Andrea. She's a self-taught watercolor artist who happens to be crazy about animals and nature. She lives in Atlanta with her husband and two sons and their rescue dog, Maybe, who is perhaps the most uncertain dog ever born. Their family owns and operates a soda pop shop, wait, soda pop and candy shops. But when you spend most of your time all hopped up in sugar, you need an outlet and that's where her love of painting comes in. Over the years, she's had many jobs, freelance writers, stay-at-home moms, special education teacher and business owner. And she likes to think that her art is a reflection of all those things. When she paints, she's thinking about the story of that animal and can usually hear what their voice would sound like if she were reading a story about them to one of her kids, which would be weird because they're grown ups now. Girl, you aged so well. Or a class full of preschoolers. I like to give my animal friends lives beyond the art room, which is why they all have names. I just want to make sure that art makes people as happy as it makes me. So see, we have similar goals. I also, I don't teach preschoolers. Um, I teach middle schoolers and some high schoolers. Many of my students do come from special education programs. And I have the joy of teaching in libraries, so I have a very different um, goal in mind for my students. We're there to have fun, we're not there for grades, but I really, I teach on YouTube because I want to share, I, I have formal art education, I want to make that accessible to more people, so I want to share it freely, and I believe that art should be for anyone who wishes to partake in art, so I want to make it as accessible as possible, so I think we have some common goals here. That said, I would, uh, ah, and there's the shop. So that is Andrea Nelson's watercolor products sold in her shop. Um, just tacking this on to the Josie Lewis video because I'm not buying these. Uh, I might buy some of her art um, or I might buy uh, like one of her coloring books or something like that or I might sign up for one of her classes but I don't think buying her watercolor sets is really the best way to support what she does partially because these are white label products so that means she is probably buying them in bulk maybe not the art professionals I don't know what that deal is but like the AliExpress slash Temu student grade set that you guys can see up here probably buying them in bulk marking them up so that she can make a profit and then reselling them and while there's nothing wrong with that it is my job as an art supply reviewer who specializes in watercolor and comic supplies to give you guys the skinny and to share my experience with you guys. And I would just, there are better ways to support what she does than with this. Like her prints are a better way, her stickers are a better way, her canvas prints are a better way, her original art is a better way. Anything with her art actually on it is probably a better way to support what she's doing than buying the watercolor kits because while these take up a lot of time, believe me, I know as a watercolor artist, the margins are different. And frankly, I can't speak for her. So I'll speak from me that I, if it were me, I would rather you buy original art from me or my prints because I care a lot more about those. I worked on those from start to finish. Those are more a reflection of me, my tastes, my abilities, and the, the messages I'm trying to communicate to the world than any watercolor set I might be selling. Because unless I'm milling those watercolors, they will never be quite as meaningful as my original art. So I can't speak for Andrea. I can speak for me though, and as an artist, that is how I would feel about that. So hopefully this little add-on was helpful for you guys. Um, 
So when I started this review, I did not think it was going to be basically a two for a review. Um, I like to do my research before I buy and before I review. Uh, I just forget because I have ADHD, like everything that I decide when I'm doing the research. So um, ADHD is fun, I guess. Uh, anyway, I was not expect. So I was like looking up Andrea Nelson's. I know she has a TikTok. I follow her TikTok. I like it. I love her energy levels. Could not be me. Could never teach preschool kids on math. Absolutely not. Um, <laughs> Middle school and high school is more uh, the speed that I'm at. Um, I, I like her work in general, but I was really surprised by the fact that she's got two Prima Marketing palette, Mungyo palettes. That's why I included it with this video is this is a Mungyo palette. And then the other one, I can't decide if it wants to be a Sakura Koi palette or if it's just a superior palette maybe or it is definitely a cheap palette and if you wanted a decent easy to find cheap student grade palette Sakura Koi would be a fine choice my problem is really the price points they're selling these palettes at and not necessarily the palettes themselves my fine problem with Josie Lewis is the obfuscation that this is a Mungyo palette and not providing the pigment info with Andrea, I mean, it says Prima Marketing on the package. I don't know whether she's buying them wholesale or just uh, selling for them or, or drop shipping. I don't know the details of that, but at least it isn't being sold as her particular palette because I know this is a sticker, but I we saw her website. You can see her Instagram ads. I get them a lot. When somebody brands it with their name, you assume there is going to be a lot more curation versus somebody selling the two Prima marketing palettes that they happen to like. Um, so I'm not going to be buying any of the Andrea Lewis palettes. I, I, I kind of want to buy one of her originals. <laughs> I have to think about that. We have to put art on, as you can see, no art yet. I'm an artist and I don't have any of my art up. Um, but I promised as if I wasn't going to buy any more originals until I got the art we own up on the walls. So uh, that might have to wait. But I want to make it clear that I do not have any problem with them personally. I do not know them. I like their art. And I think if you like their work, you should support it by buying they're not art supplies. I think you should buy their prints or their books or their puzzles or, I mean, Andrea's got like a lot of stuff or their stickers. Like there are, I think you should own their art in some capacity rather than their palettes. So we found out that the Josie Lewis art palette is just a Mung Yo palette. You can buy the 48 piece Mung Yo palette for about the same price. Please just do that and buy something else from Josie. Buy one of her super cute acrylic paintings. I tried to replicate her vibes, not, not as well as she does, because we have very different watercolor aesthetics, but I tried to replicate her vibes in a bookmark to see if maybe the Mungyo watercolors are just so well suited to that that it makes sense. I don't feel that way at all. Um, this palette, this palette doesn't have enough granulation for me personally and the kind of art I like to make. And considering her watercolor art is very color play and layering centric, it's very the qualities of the paint shining through. And I know she says she uses this palette to paint her stuff and the photos back that up. I think it's kind of a boring color selection in terms of like granulation and opacity and color selection. Everything is kind of the same, which is pretty typical for student grade watercolors. So like I would recommend, <laughs> I'm always going to tell y'all to go professional and spend more money and I'm sorry, it will last you longer. You will like it better. Um, if you want a similar color palette and you want nicer paints, the Core High Chroma Tube Palette is a nicer palette. You can put it in half pans. It will last you longer. Very similar color palette. The Core Mini Palette, the original Core Mini Palette, is also a very similar color palette. But it's like 66 bucks last I checked. So it's, 
it's it's an investment but I have had the same one for more than four years now use it all the time have refilled it love it so that would be really my recommendation um, if that is too much I understand you might want to look at Meiliang pigments they make a wonderful student grade palette with some beautiful colors I've talked about them a lot or Paul Rubens that's the parent company and the professional grade version of Mei Liang, also really good. So uh, I'm not trying to take money out of Josie's pocket. I think you should support her art. I like her art a lot. I think it's really fun. I love the textural elements of her acrylic watercolor paintings. Um, they're very sculptural. They just don't fit the aesthetic of my house at this time. So that is not the, the her acrylics are not necessarily something I would see myself buying, but her watercolors are very kind of meditative. Um, and even if you don't want to put art up in your house for whatever reason, maybe it's not your house. Maybe you live in an apartment. Maybe you just have a bedroom. I, there are a lot of reasons somebody can't put a lot of art up. She does sell like puzzles and, and things like that. So, I would recommend instead of buying this, you buy some of her art or you buy one of her puzzles or uh, maybe she has, I don't know if she has a Patreon, I'm sorry, but uh, a lot of these art influencers, you can either subscribe to their Instagram, like the paid subscription, or you can join their YouTube membership or you can support them on Patreon. You can support me on Patreon too, like I'm not that making a judgment. Um, I think that would be a better use of your money if you enjoy her work and you want to see her continue to do it than this palette here, especially because the margins on art supplies are rough. <laughs> so she's, she would see more of that money if you just supported her directly. Um, so these are the swatches. A lot of my opinions are coming from how dull these color mixes are a better quality watercolor would give you much more vibrant mixes of those same colors this is from the mungyo review that i did these are mungyo watercolors so i feel like this is applicable these are the colors in the 48 color set so you get a much wider color selection you also get some really fun like teals you get the same kind of bright blue you get more greens you just get a better color selection including some neutrals and then as you guys saw this was the wet into wet test i find that Mung i call mung yo student grade because they have the properties of student grade and the price point of student grade they market themselves as professional grade and when people white label mung yo they do the same thing but they have a lot of optical brighteners they have this weird grittiness to the paint that can chew up your brushes especially your natural natural hair brushes pretty quick um and while i need to still feel test them in an official capacity they're not my favorite of the student grade watercolors and they're not they're, they don't even register for me as a professional grade watercolor so i think there are palettes that cost the same or less that will make you happier and you can support her work in other ways andrea has the two prima palettes those are also mungyo watercolors so my opinion i have reviewed i think both of those palettes actually here on the channel just in a different a different lifetime i think that was under their art philosophy name or they've had a few different names but it's the same brand and um they were fine they're better watercolor brands out there uh, she is also selling like i mentioned that student grade set i can't really tell you what that set like i've seen that set around on aliexpress for around -ish 20 maybe 18 dollars it kind of looks like sakura koi it kind of doesn't we talked about it more i would not recommend buying that palette i would recommend supporting her work though she does some charming tiktok videos she is just such a ball of energy <laughs> i'm so jealous i don't have that kind of energy anymore and i think i'm younger than her um uh migraines and systemic health problems and family health problems will rob you of that energy yay um I, but i think there are other ways you can support what she does and um, help her continue to do it. Those palettes are not necessarily the best way. Buy her art. Her art is super cute. She does animal art. Like, who doesn't like animals? Uh, animals go in every decor. Everyone identifies with some animal. Like, buy her animal art. It's really cute. But I do want to remind y'all, I don't know these people. I don't know them at all. I try very hard not to have parasocial relationships where I really champion someone because of their online personality without no, without talking to them, without 
knowing them. So I don't, I don't know them. This is not a judgment about them. This is not a judgment about their work or the quality of their work. It is a judgment about the watercolor palettes that they have white labeled and are selling in their online shops. That is the only judgment it is. This is just me as a watercolor artist and illustrator talking about these watercolor palettes. That is all it is. So, um, I really hope, I, I have to be so careful about this because these are real people. They're not just a company. These are individuals. These are people who read their comments. I am not trying to hurt them. I am not trying to hurt their business. <laughs> I'm not trying to take their coin. I am a fellow artist, so I'm try I am trying to be both supportive but also honest with you guys about the paints because my goal with these video with these reviews is to help you find art supplies that you will like that will help you make the art you want to make and I just at this price point I just don't think it that's a good fit I think there are better fits out there I had a lot of fun doing the a box and swatch for the Josie Lewis palette even though it is Mungyo and I feel like I have reviewed Mungyo a thousand times now um, I had a lot of fun reviewing it. I had a lot of fun looking at her art and talking about it with you guys. I had a lot of fun also taking a look at Andre Nelson's website because I've only ever seen her TikTok and her YouTube channel and the variety of watercolor art that she has on there because what gets shown on her TikTok is a very specific kind of demographic, very uh, approachable and easy, very approachable art style, but I, it doesn't give you a real breadth of what she's capable of as a draftswoman. Whereas like looking at her watercolor illustrations, you can see what she's capable of as a draftswoman. That's so I want to do this series. I'm excited about this series. I am excited to decouple influencing from art supplies and help you guys buy art supplies that you'll really like. This is coming from a place of I I've been I've been influenced. I should have led with that. That was like my original plan to talk about all the stuff I bought that I didn't that I because I liked the artist and then I didn't like it and I was really upset because I felt like I got cheated. So uh, I bought the Stephanie Law watercolor palette when it was on Kickstarter, the little mini ceramic palettes. It is super cute. I don't work that small. Uh, I don't travel that much. I was charmed by it. It's not a bad product. It's kind of an expensive product. But it's not a bad product, but I probably should not have bought it. I was not really the watercolor target demographic there, right? Um, hello markers, okay? I am a big fan of Chihiro Howe's work. I think her manga inspired, well, it's not, it's not manga because it's not comics, but uh, the her aesthetic, I love her art. And she worked with Copic markers for years. She is a phenomenal, no, she does make comics because she has a webtoon. Uh, I'm not sure what to say about that, sorry. My green brain. Anyway, I like her art a lot. It's super cute, very charming. She is so good with markers. So when she was talking about Olo markers on her Instagram months before they were available and showing what they were capable of and saying that she really liked them, I spent a lot of money buying Olo markers because I thought that if Chihiro liked them and they satisfied her illustration needs that I would like them and I hate them. I don't think less of Chihiro, but those markers are not for me. I got influenced. Um, gee, what else? Some of the Jake Parker stuff earlier on definitely bought it and was like, this is not a fit for my art. I don't know why I bought this. So I think that's kind of where I'm coming from is like just giving an honest review and honest opinions on it. And if you still want to buy it, that's your choice. For whatever reason, maybe you collect art supplies and you, you're buying a palette from all your favorite watercolors. Sorry, y'all, I don't have a palette. Um, that's fine. That's a reason. I just want you to know what you're getting before you get it. And you might be stubborn like me with the Stephanie Law palette and be like, I'm going to buy it anyway because that I'm definitely going to use it. I'm totally going to use it. And then you don't use it. And I can't. I can't do anything about that, you know? That's not, my goal is not to like rip the products out of your hands. My goal is to review them and see if they're any good and see if there's anything I can learn from them. So I talked a lot today. Thank you for hanging out with me for so long. I'm gonna have ed trouble editing this. That's gonna be an adventure. Anyway, if you guys are interested in just hearing me talk about like the books that I've read and which ones I like and which ones I do not necessarily recommend and maybe flip through those, let me know that in the comments as well. 
in the end though, I am not here to take money out of anyone's mouth. I am not here to take subscribers off of anyone's channel. I am not here to ruin anyone's business. That is not my goal, not my job, not what I want to do. I am just an art supply reviewer and comic artist here to ask you guys to make art every day. And I figure if you're not spending a bunch of money on art supplies that don't make you happy, you might be more likely to spend money on the art supplies that will make you happy. So that's my goal on the channel here. I am not affiliated with anybody other than I have an Amazon affiliates link. So if it, take of that what you will. Uh, I did not purchase this palette, but a friend of mine purchased this palette and sent it to me. So thank you again to Mary Catherine for doing that because it helps so much. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And I hope to see you guys again soon with another tutorial or art supply review or maybe art influencer art supply review. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I hope to see you guys again really soon. And I really hope you guys found this helpful, useful, and informative. If you came here because you were looking for a review of the jo Josie Lewis Art Watercolor Palette, I hope I answered your questions. And if you are looking for a friendly art community, you can join me on Discord and my Discord server, The Paint Bot. So have a wonderful day, guys. Bye!